Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to talk about my travel EDC. So stick around, we have a great show for you. Okay, in a couple weeks we're going to go ahead and hop on a plane and fly out to Ohio and teach at the Pathfinder Basic class. And in doing that, getting my gear ready to go, it kind of dawned on me that one thing I've not talked about is my travel EDC or my everyday carry when I hop on an airplane and go across the country or across the world. Um, two main concerns cross my mind whenever I'm hopping on an airplane. First off is, am I going to meet the weight? Um, those in the United States, you know that we have a 50 pound flight limit. So that includes clothing, any type of gear, boots, etc. And those of you that buy those large bags that roll with the wheels and the handles, has the internal frame on it, already subtract 10 to 12 pounds for that right there. So your 50 pound limit becomes anywhere from 38 to 40 pounds. So you're already getting screwed and that sucks. So the first concern, am I gonna meet the weight? If you don't meet the weight, one pound to 10 pounds, they're gonna charge you an extra 100 bucks. So that's number one concern. Second concern is, is my baggage or does my baggage have the potential to get lost or stolen? Or items removed in order to keep me safe? So looking at that lost luggage, clothes I can replace, high dollar gear, not so much. And if I can, do I want to keep forking out hundreds of dollars because of lost items or stolen items? So my second concern is having items stolen that I can't replace or that are too expensive to replace. So I want to go ahead and dial that back. I still want good gear. I still want quality gear. But I'm going to go with a cheaper version of that that will still get the job done and teach students but won't cost me an arm or a leg to replace. So with those two concerns in mind, let's go ahead and dive into my travel EDC. Let's go ahead and talk about cutting tools or my knives. Now I have two here that I usually pick from. The first one's going to be a Mora Bushcraft Black. It retails for around $30. Made of a high carbon steel and got a sharp 90 degree spine on the back for scraping ferro rods or processing material. It has a Scandi grind. It's not a full tang knife, we got a four inch blade and roughly a three quarter tang. It passes through the handle to about this point right here. Very strong knife, very robust. Very seldomly do I see these things break. And like I already mentioned, the best part is about 30 bucks. So if it's lost or stolen, I can replace this. The next knife I wanna talk about is the Mora 511. Now, with a basic class, there's not a lot of carving. So I don't need a five inch blade. This is about three and a half inch blade. Again, high carbon steel. Now the spine isn't exactly a 90 degree spine, but taking a file, all you gotta do is file that little bit and you can hear that. Guarantee this is gonna strike a ferro rod as well. It is a rat tail tang with a plastic handle. I don't like that, but for basic knife usage and teaching the basics of knife safety, can't go wrong with this. Now, continuing with the conversation of cutting tools, let's talk about redundancies, meaning more than one type of item. So in this case, more than one type of cutting tool. And talk about our saws. I have two saws here. I have a Bacco Laplander and I have a Silky Pocket Boy. Now, I'll address the concerns right now. I received a couple of messages saying, oh, I see you switched from the Silky Gom Boy back over to the Bacco Laplander. No, I have not. But think of it as it's a tool. So do you own one pocket knife? Do you own one screwdriver? Do you own one hammer? Most likely not. So all my tools are gonna to get love at some point. And this plays along with what we're talking about today as far as a travel EDC and effective low budget items. So the Bacco Laplander is a great folding saw. The teeth work well for anything below three inches. And it's perfect for beginners or for somebody who wants to have a good budget item. And this one retails for around $20. So if it were lost or stolen, I can replace this. Now, the Silky Pocket Boy has medium sized teeth, very aggressive. It's designed to cut on the pull rather than the push. And believe it or not, it does double the amount of work because of how aggressive the teeth actually are. Now this one, you can see the size difference. It's more aggressive, it's faster, but it retails for around $30. So something like this, they weigh almost the same. Do I want to save some room in my pack or my uh, travel bag or do I want to go with a lower dollar item in case it's stolen 
So I have to pick my poison. And last but not least, let's talk about our Leatherman Super Tool 300. Here's the truth behind this tool. I purchased it around 2011, had it ever since. And to be honest, when I go to the field, I use it mainly for cutting wire, for making improvised bales, cutting nails for buck saws, bow saws, things like that. And most frequently to remove fish hooks. It's a great multi-tool, hasn't failed me yet. Get your knives, screwdrivers on here, your all, can openers, etc. And when I use it, I'm glad it's there for me. Go ahead and talk about combustion. Now, no matter where I travel to in the country or the world for that matter, I wanna have three different reliable ways to start a fire. The first one, the go-to, first time, every time for me is gonna be a Bic lighter. And I want three of those. One for a pack, one for my pocket, and one for a haversack. Or two in a pocket, one in a pack, or vice versa. All I gotta do is grab my Bic. And I'm guaranteed flame. And the rule that I live by is if I can't get that tinder source to ignite within three seconds, I'm just wasting fuel. The next fire starting method I want to talk about is a half inch in diameter by six inch in length ferrule rod. All I've done here is I've taken some one inch Gorilla tape, taped the base of it or the bottom so it can act as the thumb hold. This guarantees spark, and it's also waterproof. Taking my 90 degree spine on my knife, utilizing my thumb hold, all I gotta do, place that ferro rod against that 90 degree spine and pull back. And the last method I wanna talk about is a magnifying lens or sun lens. And I love this method, here's why. It operates using free energy or a renewable resource, meaning every day you wake up and that sun's exposed, it's not behind the clouds, you can use this method without depleting matches, fuel, ferro rods, or even lighters. Let's go ahead and talk briefly about containers. Now for me, normally two is one, one is none. If I'm out in the field hiking, scouting, camping, doing overnighters, or even like today filming, I want minimum two water bottles. But to help out with that weight restriction we talked about earlier, I'm only gonna bring one. Now, having access to clean, disinfected water is a must. So I'm gonna go with a wide mouth stainless steel bottle. This one here is a Nalgene, and I believe it's 38 ounces. I'm gonna combine this with a 48 ounce nesting cup which can double as a mini bush pot it's got two holes here one here and one there i'm going to suspend this from a tripod over a fire if i want to i'm going to combine these two items with some type of stainless steel spork and have a mini bush pot hook set at my disposal Now, as far as cordage goes, nothing fancy. This is Targ Bank Line, number 36 Bank Line. 
Think of trot line for catfish. That's all this is, except for as it's being twisted or braided, it goes through a machine where it sprays tar on there. And the tar acts as a weatherproofing and makes it rot resistant. And I found a piece of this I set up about three years ago, and I went ahead and cut it, took it down. I was able to splice it onto a new piece, and it worked just fine. It was a little bit faded, but it was still good to go. So that combined with the gripping power, using it for, say, a prusik on a ridgeline system, or even a bow for a bowstring on a bow drill set, um, I have no problem with this. I find it bites into the material, bites into the wood, and keeps it from slipping, so I'm sold on this as my go-to cordage. Let's talk about cover and shelter. I'll combine the two. Now for a cover element, I'm going with a ultralight Equinox 8x8 tarp. It's an ultralight tarp, Silni. There's also an 8x10. But what I found with something that's 8x8 is that if you turn it in a diamond shape and go corner to corner, it's roughly 12 foot. Now that works perfectly with my Eagle Nest Outfitters or Eno Camo Nest XL. I love this thing, I got it about four years ago. It folds up or squishes down into the size of a softball, and it's roughly about nine foot. So it works out perfectly. It's lightweight as well. Now I'm going to use this along with the Eno Atlas XL straps. I switched over to these because each strap is 12 foot in length, as opposed to the standard ones, which are nine foot. And the problem I have in the forest, in a desert environment like this, or even in the eastern woodlands, is a lot of trees are just out of range. So I switch over to the 12-footers, and I have more than enough now, and I'm good to go. Now we're going to combine that with a optional piece of gear. And I say optional because it depends on the type of year. I'm going to have my Eno underquilt. Now this thing right here is rated, I believe, between 40 and 50 degrees. However, I've used it at 25 degrees, and it's perfectly warm and good to go. Right now, out here in the desert area, I probably wouldn't use this. But if the temperatures are below 50, I'm going to go ahead and bring it. Let's go ahead and talk about blankets. After June, I refuse to bring a wool blanket anywhere in this country. So I default to a poncho liner. And those of you that follow my channel, you've seen recently I put a video up about the Swagman roll by Helicon. And if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you watch it. It's outstanding. I'm sold on these things. They're lightweight. They also have a drawstring bag that you can compress it down inside there, like a compression sack. You can use it for a poncho liner woobie, a sleeping bag, you can actually use it for an inner bag liner to beef up the temperatures or the temperature rating, a regular ground blanket, or even an under quilt. These things are worth their weight in gold. And if you can't find one, I suggest you get on a waiting list somewhere because these are well worth the price. And the last items I want to talk about for our shelter system is a quick or fast deployable ridgeline system and plastic stakes. Now, those of you that haven't seen this system, I'll place a card at the top of the screen. I suggest you click on that. It will take you to the video. It's outstanding. It's worth checking out. This saves a lot of time in the field. It's pre-made. It's tangle-free, and it's always there when you need it. And last but not least, the plastic stakes. Yes, I carry stakes out to the field, especially when I travel. For me, I found it saves time. I don't want to walk around looking for that perfect piece to cut off a tree, and then sit there and cut it and carve it, and make sure it's all perfect. By the time I do all that, I could have stabbed both these in the ground and be underneath my shelter. So for me, it's a time saver. They weigh almost nothing. Why not bring them? Let's go ahead and talk about headlamps. I have my Princeton Tech Viz. It's 120 lumen at the high setting, 80 lumen at the low setting. It's got a strobe and red light on here as well. This is waterproof, not water resistant. I'm only going to deal with waterproof headlamps. I'm out there. I go to places where it rains all the time. I'm not going to take that chance. I'm out there trying to do some tasks at night, doing frog gigging, or at the worst case, looking for a lost student. I don't want to take any chances. Princeton Tech is the way to go for me. Let's go ahead and talk about land navigation. No matter where I go in the world, I'm going to bring a good compass. And for me, it's going to be a Sunto MC2 base plate compass. It's multi-use. We have a signal mirror. We have the compass itself. We also have an additional fire starting method with a magnifying lens or sun lens. It's very lightweight. I'm going to combine this with ranger beads or pacing beads. And in my opinion, you can't go wrong. Okay, continuing to move forward, let's go ahead and talk about cotton bandanas or cotton material. For me, at a minimum, I'm going to bring two 
three foot by three foot cotton bandanas. These are 100% cotton and they're worth their weight in gold. There's no limit to the things you can't do with this. Everything from self-aid, meaning first aid, slings, etc., personal hygiene, and even the next fire. Taking a piece of this off, 100% cotton, and making charm material. That will take that weakest spark, that way I can initiate that next fire. So from here, let's go ahead and move on to cargo tape. Normally, I would suggest a two inch roll, range from gear repair, clothing repair, and even self-aid, meaning you can make butterfly bandages out of this. But being that I'm traveling, I want to save space, I want to save room, I want to save the weight. I'm going to scale it down to a one inch roll. All right, moving on to health and comfort items. Now, for me, I find that no matter where I go in the country, spring, summer, winter, fall, it wants to rain. Why? Because if it ain't raining, we ain't training. And that's the truth. So, for me, I'm going to default to a Helicon poncho. It's exact same specifications as a military poncho. It does the exact same thing. It has button snaps as well. You can take this, use it with your swag man roll, just like an original military poncho, and beef it up towards 100% waterproof. You can also take this and turn it into a improvised sleep system with that swag man roll. Worst case, I have a secondary shelter system that I could use to, say, cover wood. Worst case, I could put it on my body and get out of the rain. All right, the next health and comfort item I want to talk about is a two foot by two foot signal panel. And I put it in the health and comfort category because ultimately it's designed to help your health and your comfort by getting you rescued and getting you home. So this signal panel is designed to do exactly what it says. Signal for rescue. I can wave it up and down. I can tie it to a long 10 or 12 foot pole and wave it. I can attach it to my pack. I can even place it in the middle of an open field. Now, one other option that this signal panel affords me is that I can take it tie it to a tree branch at eye level and now it becomes a waypoint. I can drop my pack or set up a small camp right there and it allows me to roam around freely as far as the eye can see. Meaning as far as I can turn around and see that panel, I can come right back, put my gear on and continue down that trail. Last thing I want to talk about is a good notebook and pencils. For me it's going to be right in the rain first time every time. This case is also made by right in the rain. We'll hold up to four pens or pencils. It's got internal pockets for maps and protractors. We also accommodate, I believe it's a four by seven or three by seven right in the rain notebook. It also has a final pouch here in the back. It zips up, will actually fit inside of a military style cargo pocket. Welcome back. I hope this video helps clarify the question of what I carry when I travel the country. Now, as usual, these items or some version of them can be found on my Amazon Influencer page. I'll go ahead and toss a link inside the description box. Please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm going to catch you next time.